Hey guys, it's week three. It's April 4th, a Saturday. We're going to do our walkabout through the whole greenhouse and point out a bunch of stuff that we'd be doing this particular week. So come on on in. First of all, if you remember, we talked about our tropicals that we separated for the plant sale. So we're going to go through and I'm going to take individual pictures so we can identify these different. We've got one, two ferns. We've got uh, some house plants here. We've got some Swedish ivy over here. We've got other stuff back here. Some are house plants, some would be for outside planting, but I'm gonna try and assign one of these to each of you to do a bench card. And I'll get you the, the signage or the, the pictures later so you can ID them. We also have a couple succulents that I wanna try and find. Anybody adventurous, if they can find out what the heck this thing is. And these guys, uh, the things that we have quantity of, we wanna try and do bench cards. Okay, we're gonna come down here. I kind of wanted to show you something. I know you guys remember this from earlier in the semester. This is a hibiscus, a tropical hibiscus. Normally we grow it as a, uh, a little bushy thing, but we're gonna turn this one into a tree. So really quick here, I'm just gonna snip, 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 snip. This is also a pruning demonstration. I'm gonna cut all these off and then I'm gonna strip these down just with my fingers to get all that off of there if they're small enough. And I'm just going to, through the course of the next month or so, I'm just going to take care of anything that's growing down low, I'll get rid of, and we're just going to, I'll stake it up a little bit, but we'll grow it as a tree, and then it'll be maybe three, four feet tall, and then we'll let it bush out at the top. So that's going to be our tree hibiscus. Over here, some of you guys uh, potted up these ferns, uh, made a mistake of, I don't know if you can see this little guy here, that's a fiddle, that's the new, new fern fronds emerging. So what I'm going to do, and we should have probably done this when we potted them, but I wanted to kind of catch up a bit. We're going to cut all this old stuff off, because if you look at them, they're not that attractive, right? Look at this thing back here. That's really ugly. So we want it to bush out. So I'm just going to cut all those off of this one and that one. This one I'll leave. There's a couple other ones in the back. We're going to do the same thing, just so they get fuller and um, look better to sell. Okay, we're going to go to the next section. This guy. So this is David, a second year student. He brought this in uh, last fall. Um, somehow or another, he got some kind of a cucurbit in here. And you're gonna have to get closer. I, I think it's just a seed from a cucumber or something. I'm not sure. I'm assuming you saw the white fly. Whoop, there they go. Whoop, there they go. But what I want you to look at is the little silvery patches on the top. Now, I don't remember who had this pest, but we're gonna talk about it. But what I'm going to do is the paper test. Do you remember what other insect we did the paper test for? We'll talk about it, but we're going to do it for this one as well. So what I want you to look at, and I don't think you're going to see it. Do you see that little thing in front of my scissors that's moving? There's another one. There's another one. These are called thrips, and uh, I was afraid we'd get them. That's a, not a good pest, so I'm going to take this and throw it away. This plant's going out today, going out of the greenhouse. Okay, real quick, I, these are all of our perennials. Real quick, a quick pan. And again, I've showed this to you before. I'm gonna start doing some experiments. So when I was here on Tuesday, I separated, I took two of each of our perennials and I put them over here. I'm gonna grow these dry, real dry the rest of the semester. So I'm not gonna water them as often as I'm gonna water the other stuff. And we're gonna see how that affects growth, all right? The other thing we're gonna do is some pinching. So our um, nepeta back here looks nice and bushy, it's fine. Here's our Amsonia. Look how big our Amsonia is, right? It's over a foot. So I've never done this with Amsonia, but we're gonna try it. I'm gonna actually cut these back. I'm gonna be pretty random. I call this a ponytail cut. I'm not gonna be re real detailed about where there's a node or whatever. I'm just getting down and quick here, and I'm just gonna cut those right off like that. So now hopefully, right, from pruning, uh, we've learned that we're gonna get growth from behind that. I know it'll grow, I just don't, I wanna see if it's gonna flower again if this is something I could do to get it to flower again by the plant sale. Over here we have our coral bells. They look fine. Again, these when we got them were big plugs, so that's why they're so lush. They're starting to flower, but we don't really care. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pinch just like we did with the Amsonia. We're going to do the same thing with the Heliopsis, the false sunflower. I want to see if we can get them a little fuller. So, oh boy, we got white fly. Oh my gosh. Okay. I didn't notice that before. This is not good. Holy cow. All right, we're gonna have to do something about that. So same thing, I'm gonna cut these back. 
The reason is we want them to be bushier and fuller and um, they sh still should flower. They'll flower a little later, but again, we'll see how that goes. We're gonna do the same thing here with the, ne uh, with the Nepeta cat's mint. We're just gonna cut some back. Anything that's real straggly for now, we're gonna cut back, cut back, cut back. I'm gonna do two rows of these. So the goal is just by the end of this, uh, the end of the class to see how they look compared to the other ones that we have left unpinched. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the perennial salvia, okay? Normally I would have picked out the ones that were really scrawny to do this with, but I'm just in the essence of time. I'm just doing two rows that are together. I'll come back later, clean all that up. I don't want dead plant material in there from disease standpoint. Okay, we're gonna go back now and look at maples so for those of you in our boar culture we're going to do a grafting lab so these are some japanese maple i got from the west coast i potted them up about two two and a half weeks ago watered them in and left them at home i just brought them into the greenhouse on tuesday so i'm going to leave them here for about a week and a half you can see they're starting to bud the buds are breaking right they're bright uh, they're leafing out so i'm going to fertilize these today get them going and then we'll do a video on grafting later and then finally over here, we have all of our little vegetables, right? Janice, oh, while I was prepping some stuff, she, she transplanted a bunch of peppers. So they look a little bad now, but they'll perk up once we water them. So again, we have different combinations based on the tag. This one has California Wonder, Jalapeno, and Serrano. Jalapeno and Serrano are hot. This one has one of all four. We have four different peppers. It has California Wonder, that's a bell pepper, Jalapeno, Habanero, and Serrano right so each one is a different pepper hopefully she did it right this one's all jalapenos all four and then these are the tomatoes that we did uh two weeks ago and they're looking really great now right i don't think we lost one as ugly as they look when you transplant i don't think we lost one and again our combinations um this has got these are more the uh, specialty old-fashioned ones black creme uh, pineapple a better boy and aroma so this has two modern ones and two heirlooms the ones back here with the yellow tags these are all the more popular ones these are the ones we potted on the video beefsteak better boy roma and um as a super sweet 100. so then this one is a combination of abe lincoln super sweet roma and early girl we only had a few early girls those those set fruit earlier than the other ones do and then our last set here is uh, Roma, beefsteak, black crim, and pineapple. So, so they're looking good. All right, uh, real quick on the mist bench. These are all leftover tomatoes we're not using. Oh, of course it has to go off. <laughs> right from there, <laughs> did it get them the lens? So the lens is all wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The beauty of live TV. All right, maybe we'll skip that after we come out of the bench. So you want to go in here? It should shut up. Oh should shut off by now. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, so now <laughs> live TV. I'm determined not to stop them, guys. I just want to keep going. So the only thing I wanted to show you here was, you remember way back when we did our cuttings, and I'd have to look back at our chart for times. Look at some of those roots. So basically, everything is rooted, right? I'm just giving a little tug, and if they they resist, I know there's some roots in there. These are really well rooted. This little guy. Something else you can look at, if they start to push new growth, that usually means they're rooting. So obviously that one's not doing anything, but let's pull this little guy out. Not much, but a little bit. I'll transplant those maybe next week. I did want to show you this, the begonia. So this is a leaf cutting, right? Rather than a stem, it's just a leaf. Look at that, right out of the petiole. And look at all the callus tissue. From those of you from plant science, that's callus tissue at the bottom, a lot of nice roots. So those are ready to be transplanted. Those, because they don't have a bud, right, they have to actually push up new growth to, to actually grow a new plant. All the other ones have buds. Okay, now we're gonna awkwardly get behind our, our tent. So this is the one with the full spectrum LED light. Full spectrum LED light. Couple things I wanted to show you in here. Um, these begonias, right, are getting really stringy and leggy. So these we're gonna pinch back. Whoop. So this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful about where I cut it to. So I'm gonna cut right above a node. I'm gonna take off flowers. Remember, flowers don't matter right now. So I'm gonna cut back 
the flowers and I'm just pinching right back to above a node. I don't have fingernails so I don't pinch so I use these and they sound like they're pinching. So this should help again I'm going to do one tray of these and I'm not going to do another and so we'll see the difference later on. And again I'll come back and clean all that up after the fact. What else did I want to show you in here? Um, I did want to, oh this one right in front of me. So this is our Prince Tut sedge. It has edges, for those of you from Weed ID, I don't, you can't see that, but that is triangular. So it is a sedge, right? Just for a little review. Of course, we need the deadhead again, the geraniums. I deadheaded all these in that last video a week and a half ago. And these are buds that were ready and they're, they're now flowering. So we're gonna pinch those as well. Uh, begonias, I might have a better one in the next box to show you, but these are the tuberous begonias that are just a really, really pretty flower. So one of the things we're gonna to need to do, right, remember we gotta do ID. So as you look at some of these pictures, well, I gave you the list, you have the list, so you can look them up online. Um, one of the concerns I have is these. These are the New Guinea impatience. Uh, this is the one I showed you that had botrytis, and actually I see a little bit right there now, yep. There's some from dead plant material, right? So it's not severe, but not good, but they're just not growing. So my assumption is, is that Four Star hit these with a growth regulator before they shipped, and they just have not come out of it yet. Um, I, I wanna try and check with Josh and see. Hopefully when I fertilize today, it'll push those and get them, get them going. Okay, next. Hopefully you guys don't get nauseous with the camera going all over the place. <laughs> So this is our blue only light, correct? And hopefully you remember blue light stimulates vegetative growth. So um, probably next week I'm going to pull some of these out and compare from each of the three huts. We'll compare full spectrum LED, blue light, and the H, uh, the high pressure sodium light that we have next door. Uh, these also have to get pinched and there was one other, yeah, these little guys are definitely going to need a pinch. Uh, the Angelonia, yeah normally that should be much bushier. So we're going to come down and take those. Again, I'll do half of them for experimental purposes. If we were actually going to have a plant sale, I'd probably do them all. But um, this is going to be more educational. Okay? So I'm just going to pinch. This one actually has two breaks, but so I'm going to pinch it less, but I'm still going to pinch it. Okay, I think that's it for this one. Let's go into the third. So one thing I find interesting here is these New Guineas are blooming, uh, and if you notice, the others weren't. So this is full spectrum, high pressure sodium lights. Actually, I'm going to have to go back and look at the full spectrum uh, LED light and see if those were flowering. I think they might have been. So again, that promotes the, the blue light, uh, promotes vegetative growth, not flowering, right? So, um, so we're back to these. Remember we talked about these fuchsia before? These were the ones that we pinched before I was on the other side of the table, but these are the ones we pinched when we potted them. These we did not. So what I wanna do now is these are really starting to get leggy. So we're gonna pinch again, right? What kind of tool are you using? These are just these little, I don't know what they call them, but they're like little scissors. I just like these for this because they're really pointed so I can get in there and I can find my node and I can cut right back to it. Again, if you had fingernails, you could do it with that. But So I'm just doing a quickie here. So remember now, from pruning classes, right, it's going to come from below the cut. So the lower I go, theoretically, the bushier it's going to be. That one doesn't need it as much, but I want to do the whole tray. Okay. There we go. Uh, I don't like that one. I'm going to go a little deeper. What do we have? Five weeks till the plant sale, I believe. So we'll see. Those will not be blooming. I know that. These hopefully will. All right, one last thing. So Jenny asked the other day about these sweet potato vines. And um, so she thought they had white fly eggs or larva on them. And I agreed. She sent me, she texted me a photo. So I isolated them. To be honest, I didn't look that close. I did spray them with an insecticide. But what I want to show you is they looked really clean when I was here on Tuesday. They were fine. They look good, and now all of a sudden, 
Can you see that? See those little spots? I'll take a picture and, and send it.